Hi, I'm Avril and I'm here in Greece freezing my eggs and making a video for you to document my progress and what the whole experience was like because everyone's asking me so many questions. So I figure this is a good place to answer them. So why I decided to do this in Greece as opposed to the US or Australia, because uh, I live in the US and I am from Australia, is because firstly, it's so much cheaper here. The doctors that I talked to quoted me between 1,500 and 2,000 euros. Compared to America, you'll pay upwards of $10,000, which is similar, like it's almost one-to-one -one euro to dollar, to give an idea. Um, but I have friends in the US that have paid more than $20,000 for the procedure, depending on like the doctor, the location, like if you're in Miami, New York, LA, it's gonna be a lot more expensive. Um, which is where I'm from. And uh, in Australia, I think my friend paid like 17,000 Australian dollars, which might be like 12 or 13 US dollars to compare. Um, if you are over a certain age in Australia, I do believe you can get a Medicare discount, but it's still, you're gonna pay more than half of that. So it's still pretty expensive even in Australia. Um, I think she got a discount and paid like 12,000 Australian dollars, which is what probably like, eight nine thousand americans so it's still expensive compared to here the other thing is that i've lived in greece before so i have my friends here i know that being here for three weeks i'm not going to be bored um because it is a whole process which i'll explain in a bit uh, also unfortunately from personal experience i know that the medical system here is really good it's high level medical care the hospitals are nice um, and so, yeah, it was an easy decision for me to choose to go to Greece. The, you know, the doctors are very well trained, etc. And the, the other thing which I think is really important is the laws surrounding IVF here are very liberal. For example, you have big options for sperm donors if you choose to go that route rather than using like someone you know sperm, like a boyfriend or husband or whatever. Um, and also the sperm donation is very affordable. Um, as at today, uh, sperm donation to choose my sperm like the look of the person like the genetics stuff like that uh, from anywhere in the world I believe is around 500 euro the doctor said so um, that in America is like thousands um, or in Australia you don't even get to choose your uh, you can choose like very limited options um, you don't see like a picture of um, or like know the sort of specifics of the genetics of the person or anything like that the other question i've been getting asked is can anyone do it here in greece kind of yes what the doctor gives you the information to go and do is you just if you're not like living in greece and you're not a citizen or a resident of greece or the eu then um you go to a notary and you get them to write a letter um, and that basically gives the permission for it to happen and then it's all good. So, and the laws cover you and everything's fine. So um, yes, basically anyone can do this procedure in Greece. How I found my doctor, basically I just asked friends for personal recommendations. I had uh, four different doctors recommended to me. Um, I spoke to a few of them on the phone and this guy I just got the best vibe from, so I went with it. I didn't really do a whole lot of solid research. He had done the IVF of a guy and his wife that are colleagues of one of my best friends in Australia. So um, that was why I went with him. And then when I got here and I was telling one of my Greek friends who I was going to see, she was like, oh, he's the best. And a few people said that actually. So I was like, okay, good. <laughs> Glad I went with my gut. Another thing in Greece is that they will keep your eggs for as long as you want up to, I think when you're like 54, 55 years old, um, because that's the max age that you're legally allowed to have IVF here in Greece. Uh, so if that's 20, 25 years, they'll keep it for 20, 25 years or until you say that you want them destroyed. Whereas in other countries, often they'll only keep them for a max of 10 or some countries even five years. So that's pretty awesome about Greece. And they can ship your eggs on ice to anywhere in the world that you want. So just say, I freeze my eggs here in Greece today, and then I decide in three months I want to have IVF in America. I can have them for a cost, of course, shipped to America. Um, they'll stay fresh and exactly as I need them to be without damage um, getting to America and I could, or anywhere I wanted in the world, um, and I could have the IVF procedure in a different country if I wanted to. 
So the first thing I did to get this whole process rolling was I had a phone call with the doctor while I was still in America and he was obviously here in Greece. We just organized a time. He answered all my questions, explained the process to me, sort of like an overview of it. Um, and in that, what he told me is that the process starts on the first day of your period. So usually on the first day or prior to the first day, they like to have an in-person consultation. Um, also before that, he asked me as soon as possible to go and get my AMH levels tested, the anti-malarian hormone, which is an indication of a woman's fertility. So they can have an idea of like what kind of dosage of medication um, and procedure plan, whatever they are going to do to get the best result for you. Um, so I did that in the US. I got it from requestatest.com for $89 at LabCorp. Anyone can do it. It's easy. Um, you don't have to get like a whole referral. It's not crazy expensive. Uh, so I did that. I got the result. I sent it to my doctor here in Greece. Um, he told me that to come and see him on the first day in, in his office of um, my period, or I ended up coming before because I was here a couple of days earlier because my period came late. Um, and I went to him. He explained everything even more detailed in person, did an ultrasound. Like they put lube on a thing and stick it in your vagina and they have a look and see like what your ovaries and follicles and stuff like that look like. Uh, so that was the first part when I got here. Then he gives me a list of all the medication that I need to go get. I go to the pharmacy. I got a shit ton of medication. So not everyone's medication program looks exactly the same, but um, speaking to many of my girlfriends that have also done this procedure, it sounds like mine was pretty similar to a lot of theirs. And so um, I guess this is kind of a general experience, but again, like could be different for the individual. So from day two of my period, I had to start taking tablets. There was two different tablets. One I would take at 10 a.m. every day and the other I would take at both 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. Um, and that was from day two until day six. Um, starting on day three of my period, I had to in do injections, which I had to like mix up the stuff myself. They explain. I went into the um, doctor's office and they explained and showed me like how to do it. And then I had to, yeah, like mix it up each day and uh, give that to myself. And that was so traumatizing because I'm petrified of needles. Um, you can actually go into any pharmacy here in Greece and they'll do it for you like for free. Uh, but every time I was having to do it, I was just always in a rush somewhere. I was like on the road and I literally had it like in my car, I'd pull over and like set the whole thing up and mix it all up and take five minutes. And then I just be like, <laughs> and I would inject myself. Oh my God. I was literally having nightmares about it. I was so traumatized, but that's me and cause I'm petrified of needles. So there, there are options that you can get someone else to do it for you. But, um, yeah, that was, uh, not an easy one. Oh my god. Ah, that was traumatizing. <laughs> Fuck. And I had to do that every afternoon around 2.30 p.m. Today is day five. And I don't really think I'm bloated much. Maybe a tiny bit. Could also just be from diet. <laughs> And on day seven was when I went for my first ultrasound after, you know, having started the process. Again, they like get the knob and they put the lube and the condom on it and they put it inside you and they have a look just to see like how many follicles you are producing. And how many follicles you have is how many eggs they hope to get. So like per follicle that you produce, typically there's one egg in each follicle. You might have 27 follicles, but only 10 of them have eggs in them. So just because you have a lot of follicles, it doesn't also necessarily mean that you're going to get a lot of eggs. But the more follicles you have, the more chance of a higher yield. So that's what they're checking for when they're doing the ultrasounds. And that also helps them to determine if they need to increase or decrease maybe your medication. So after my ultrasound on day seven, they didn't change my medication at all. When I went for my ultrasound on day nine, then they did increase my medication. I had to introduce another injection. Oh, <laughs> so I had two injections a day um, and I would do them 15 minutes apart. So there was one I had to do first and then 15 minutes later, the other one. It was only after that second injection was introduced that I started to feel a little bit bloated. 
felt very heavy. Like it was like a pressure pushing on my stomach and my ovaries to eat was difficult. I just never felt like I would feel starving hungry, but to actually eat food, it was like hard because I felt so full because my stomach was so like bloated. So that was an interesting experience. Today is day 10 and it's wild. Like I still have abs, but like I'm so bloated. Like I'm very thick, like a lot more than normal. And I have this little like, okay, I know I'm still skinny as fuck, but like for me, this is bloated. And it's like, yeah, it's like rock solid, but it's like just out there. So yeah, the bloating finally started. But um, still no mood swings. Like, I'm so happy. I feel good. No emotional craziness. As far as, like, lifestyle, my doctor told me I could do pretty much anything I wanted. And I was. I was exercising at a fairly, like, good amount and pace. Um, pushing myself, like, decently. Uh, and I felt no emotional ups and downs. I was very happy. Um, I wasn't depressed or sad, which many of my friends had a very different experience to that. They were super depressed. They were very lethargic. They weren't even allowed to exercise some of them. Um, so I didn't have any of that. The doctor told me I could drink alcohol if I wanted, which I don't drink a lot of anyway, but um, I was allowed to. I could eat whatever I wanted. I was allowed to have sex. I was allowed to exercise as much as I wanted. Um, there was no restrictions on my lifestyle um, which is different again to what some of my other girlfriends had to go through. So I don't know if that's just Greece or it was maybe just me or maybe the medication he was giving me was fine with what I was doing. Um, but my experience in all of that was great. Oh God, I hate these injections. I just had to do more. Look at my stomach. It's like track marks. Like if that was on my arm, I'd look like a chunky. <laughs> Um, but tomorrow is the last day I have to do injections. There's a lot of them. I have, um, today just the normal amount. Tomorrow I have to do, um, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and then two different ones at 11 PM. Oh, but then it's over. No more injections after that. So I'm, yeah, traumatized, but slightly excited. Today is day 12 of my cycle. And I've been exercising pretty much every day, but today was the first day that I felt like really heavy, especially around my midsection. Like I felt I had to really focus on keeping my core locked on while I was running because otherwise uh, my muscles would just like let go uh, and I just feel it back pain. So that's interesting. It's uh, yeah, the bloating's finally taking effect. Today is the day, day 14, and I have my procedure today. And you can see I am so bloated. <laughs> I mean, I'm still skinny, like I said, but I'm, yeah, I'm like out here, little chunk in the middle there. And I feel so heavy yesterday. I didn't have to do any injections or take any medication, just one pill in the morning. Um, but I still couldn't even exercise because I just felt so full, like, so, like my stomach literally feels like it's going to explode right now and so any like movement is just like a lot like even going to sleep last night it was like I was a bit crampy almost um so yeah looking forward to getting these eggs out and hopefully feeling back to normal again in a taxi uh they told me I had to take a taxi because I don't know if I'll be able to drive home because of the anesthetic um I wasn't allowed to eat or drink anything this morning and I'm hungry. My it's really early, it's like 6 a.m. My ovaries feel so like full, like literally they're gonna explode. It's like pushing on my hip flexors. So sitting down is like this feels very awkward in my stomach. I had my egg retrieval procedure this morning and everything went really well, no complications at all, very straightforward process. I didn't have any bleeding, which is a pretty common symptom, apparently the doctor said, so that was great. Um, what happened is uh, you go in, um, you do all your check-in and everything like that, and then you take all your clothes off, all your jewelry, everything. You wear a gown only and some like socks <laughs> and a hairnet thing, 
and uh, the gown like opens up at the front. Then they take you into the room where they do the procedure. There was a whole bunch of nurses there. Um, they like strap me into like stirrups, the legs kind of thing. Um, and so my vagina is just like out there and exposed, but like covered with a sheet thing. And uh, then one of the nurses, she asked me if she could clean my vagina. <laughs> um, so that was kind of like a bit like a pap smear where they like open it up and then they go in and they like swab it. I don't know exactly what she was cleaning for or disinfecting or I don't know, getting ready for the procedure apparently. Then um, the doctor comes in and the anesthetist, they put a catheter in my um, arm and they start pumping me full of anesthetic and then I'm out and I love that feeling. It's the best where you're just like, ah, bye. Apparently the entire procedure is only about 15 minutes long. It's very quick. <laughs> and then next thing I woke up, I was in a different room um, in like the recovery area and I had a really strong cramp in one of my sides, like in that side there. And it was quite painful actually. And they kept coming in and checking on me every few minutes and it was getting worse and worse. It just felt like a really intense cramp that wouldn't go away. So I still had the catheter in my arm. They were putting a painkiller in there, but it didn't seem to be helping. And after a while I was like, I started crying because I was just like so tired and it was painful, but I couldn't sleep because of the cramping. And so she gave me a painkiller injection in my bum and maybe like 15, 20 minutes after that, I'm not really sure because I was sort of like dozing in and out of sleep and half conscious. Um, then the pain finally went away and then I was able to just like relax and actually go to sleep. And they were still coming in and checking on me every like, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes. I have no idea about the timeline. And uh, I was like, just let me sleep, just let me sleep. And I was like refusing to get up. Um, until eventually uh, the doctor came in, he spoke to me about everything. He told me what happened in the procedure, that everything went really well. And um, yeah, then uh, I did start to feel well enough to get up and get dressed. I was also starving. So I went next door to the bakery, smashed a sandwich um, and uh, some coffee, and then went to the doctor's office and uh, had a little chat with him. And then that's it. Uh, I came home. And then I napped for about three hours until now it's five o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, I think the anesthetic has finally worn off because my drowsiness has finally subsided. Uh, I don't have any cramping or anything anymore. Um, either the painkillers from this morning are still working or maybe it was just, you know, a very short lived thing anyway. And it's better now. Um, but yeah, I feel great. Um, I'm not allowed to exercise for the next four days or have sex or drink alcohol. I have to take an antibiotic. Um, morning and night for the next four days and I am traveling tomorrow back to Miami but other than that I think that's my whole experience and it's been great. So today is the day after the procedure and I just thought it was worth showing this how bloated I am today it's like even worse than yesterday also something a friend told me about that I didn't really take that seriously is the constipation I just got fiber tablets thinking that would be enough. It is not enough. Get like actual, you know, uh, laxatives or something because yeah, I took fiber tablets and I still haven't been since like two days now. So I guess that's what this is. <laughs>